Hey guys, Jordan here from BDS Suspension, and today I have a 2018 Tundra. I'm going to be showing you how to install our 7-inch coilover suspension system. So now once you got your truck up in the air, you're going to go ahead and take your wheels and tires off. And you can kind of see that this doesn't look like your normal factory setup here. We already had our coilover kit on it, but the teardown will be generally the same, just be a couple different things, but just follow along and you'll kind of get the concept of it. Our first steps here is I'm just going to remove all these cotter keys. So there's one on the axle here, one on the tie rod, and then one on the upper ball joint. So just bend the cotter key down and be able to pull it out. So just look something like that. Now when you have your cotter key removed on the CV nut here, you can see it has this little castle washer deal here that just covers over the axle nut. Just go ahead and remove that, don't lose that because you will reuse it. And then we're going to take our inch and 9 16 12 point socket and you can make it kind of show you here how that nut is a little goofy there. So just take your socket and move that nut. Now we're going to remove our outer tie rod nut. So just take a 24 millimeter socket. Don't remove it completely, just loosen it up. So, you can, so what we're going to have to do here to get this, the best way to get this off is we're going to thread this nut back on and make it completely flush with the end of the threads on the tie rod itself. And that's just gonna be able to allow us to hit the top of it with a hammer without damaging the threads and to be able to pop that um, tie rod out of the knuckle here. So go ahead and just give it one good whack. Move that nut the rest of the way, pull your tie rod out. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our brake line brackets from the knuckle. So this is just a 12 millimeter socket here and just remove that bolt. And that's just gonna allow us more slack when we remove the caliper from the knuckle and the rotor. So now once you got your brake lines removed from your knuckle, we're gonna go ahead and remove the ABS wire from the top of the arm. Now you can see that this is our BDS upper control arm. The factory will kind of have the same setup. It'll just be a 12 millimeter bolt just going through into the arm. In our case, we just have a little wire clamp with a quarter inch bolt here. So it's just a 7 16 that we're gonna remove. Just remove that. That's once again, just a lot more slack when we take it all apart. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper from the knuckle and the rotor. Now there's just two caliper bolts back here. They will take a 19 millimeter socket to remove. And you can see here that from the brake line to the caliper, there's a small hard line here. You might have to just bend that bracket out of the way and it's a little flexible, but not too flexible. So make sure you don't pinch it and bend it to break it. So just move that out of the way a little bit to be able to gain access to this upper bolt here. So take your 19 millimeter socket. Remove that bolt, and then remove the lower. And then remove your caliper from the rotor and just hang it up out of the way. Now we're just gonna go ahead and remove our rotor from our hub there. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our upper ball joint nut. In our case, just a 21. We're gonna take a swivel to be able to access that. You're not supposed to do that, but it comes off a lot easier. Generally, you wanna leave the nut on and then just hit the knuckle if it does not pop out of there. But in our case, it just popped right out. So just be careful of that swinging up there. Now we're gonna remove the bolt that holds the ABS line to the knuckle here. In this case, we just have a wire clamp, but there should just be a bracket for the factory part. So it's still just a 12 millimeter socket. Go ahead and remove that. Then once you have this removed, you grab your five millimeter Allen and remove this Allen bolt that holds the ABS into the knuckle and the abs might be tight in the knuckle so sometimes it might just slide right out in our case it just slid right out now the cv splines are very tight on this typical knuckle and wheel bearing here so best way if you don't have an air hammer is just take a punch or a hammer and hammer that back be careful to not mess up the threads because it's fully threaded in our case just take an air hammer put it right in the center pop that out of there now, once we got our CV out of our wheel bearing here a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and remove these four bolts that hold the wheel bearing on to the knuckle. Now, these ones run, so as you can see, outward, inward. And so to get them all completely out, you'll have to back it out one at a time very slowly. So you have to go to this one, back it out a little bit, this one, back it out a little bit. Just make sure you don't get your wrench stuck there. So but in case it's a 17 millimeter wrench, Put it on your bolt and pull it. And just do that for all of them, break them free, and then just slowly go and remove them. Now, once you get your bolts all the way backed out, 
you're going to realize that you can't pull them out of here. So what you have to do is you'll have to get the wheel bearing off the knuckle. So sometimes they just fall right off. Other times they might be stuck a little bit. So you might have to get them a little per, bit of a persuasion. So go ahead and just try and just pull it off of there. And you might have to get a punch in here to be able to open it up where it's stuck at. Like so. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our knuckle from our lower control arm. We are going to be re reusing our lower control arm here. So you now have to remove this cutter key or this castle nut here. They provide you with two bolts here to remove the knuckle from the lower control arm here with this bracket staying on the lower ball joint. So go ahead and take a 22 millimeter socket and these will be very tight. Remove those. And just hold the knuckle once you start loosening the other side. Pull that knuckle off of there. Now we're just gonna remove our lower sway bar bolts here into the arm. So just take a 19 millimeter socket. Remove both sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our sway bar from our frame here. Remember we already removed our link from our lower control arm. So here we just have a 19 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove these bolts. Be careful because this sway bar is heavy. And then we can let that sit there. Then take a pry bar and pry your links out of your lower arm here. This one you might not have to, and how tight they are. Remove the sway bar. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our lower coilover bolt. Same with you guys, it's just gonna be a strut bolt. I do not recall the size here, but you're just removing the nut on this side, so you might have to hold it. In our case, it's a 24 on each side. Remove the nut. And then once you get the nut removed, I'm going to take the impact and thread the bolt out. A good way to do this is you take a wrench and get it on your washer and you just help pull it. Now once you have this coilover bolt removed, we're gonna go ahead and loosen our lower control arm bolts here. So on the front side here, it'll have a bolt, so it'll be a full bolt going through with a nut on the back side. So hold that with a 24 wrench, just so it doesn't spin, and then 24 millimeter socket, loosen this bolt. And then on the other side, it'll be the opposite. You'll have a nut with a fixed head. Once again, hold the head side and then Remove the nut and then hold up this arm. Because now it's gonna wanna swing out of the way. You might have to pry out your strut or coil over for this to swing out, like so. Now we're going to remove our lower control arm cam bolt. So here we're just gonna pull the bolt off of that nut. And there will be sleeves with these cams, as you can see. It might be pretty tight. So that's the sleeve that the bolt goes through. And this is just kind of how the front one goes. It kind of just slides in there and threads in. And the rear side will be slightly different, but typically the same way. So go ahead and pull the bolt head out once you get your nut off. And just remove your lower control. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our coilover or your strut from the vehicle. In our case, we have bolts that just thread into our aluminum part here. On yours, there'll probably just be four studs with nuts on them. So just make sure you go ahead and remove those nuts and just pull that out of here. But here, I'm gonna remove our, my four bolts and pull this out. Now just remove that from the vehicle. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our front drive shaft from our differential. So here on the differential itself, there's just four studs and the drive shaft is held on by nuts. So that's just a 14 millimeter socket. You'll probably need an extension. It's the easiest way. Go ahead and put that on there. And remove those four nuts. Now, once you got your four nuts removed from your front drive shaft here, the easiest way, because we are going to have to drop the diff out of the way and the drive shaft is still connected because of those studs, you can either remove the four nuts back here that connect to the transfer case, or what I like to do is just take a pry bar, stick it in here, 
pry back and just wedge it against something so that it's out of the way of those studs in that front diff so you can drop that diff down. So now once you got your drive shaft removed on your front differential, we're gonna go ahead and just support our front diff here. We just have this hydraulic stand here. Now in our case, there's these little spacers here that was our diff drop earlier, but I mean, the kind of the same concept, you'll just have bolts here that'll drop out and then as long as well as this nut right here that drops down into the cross member. So you're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket, remove this nut. And there's just a stud in there that goes down, so it's just that nut. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and get our wrench on our top side, our bolts up here. Then you're gonna call your buddy. And then we're gonna remove this bolt right here. This is just threaded into the diff itself. We gotta drop that. that the best way is we're gonna have to pick up on this rear here and push this stud out of the cross member and you might have to remove this as well to remove that whole bracket and then you get it. Now, once you got your front diff out, we're gonna have to cut this rear cross member out. So our measurements will be from this outside edge of the driver's side, this outside edge completely, is gonna be three and 13 sixteenths. You can see that we already have it kind of cut because we once had this out already, but yours will just be three and 13 sixteenths from this side. And on the back side here, it'll be three and three eighths roughly from this inside here of this cam stopper. So about three and three eighths, and then just connect those two cuts and make one big cut. And on the back side here, it'll be roughly about three inches from that cam stop as well. And on each side, it'll be three inches. Just connect those two cuts. Now, once you have your measurements marked up for where you gotta cut, make sure that if you're not comfortable doing this, you have somebody who is comfortable doing this. The best tool that we found for this is either a plasma cutter or the sawzall here, just because the sawzall has a nice long blade and it's a nice smooth cut. But just kind of mark right on your Put it right on your mark and just kind of cut away. Look at that, that is pretty. Now, once you got your cross member cut out, we're gonna go ahead and grind these two pockets that we made the cuts on. And we also provide you with these welding plates. So when you're grinding, just try to make it as flush as possible so it's easy for you to weld on, because when it's all you have gaps and everything, it's a little harder to weld on. One, now once you have your cross member cut out and the pieces grinded down, you're gonna go ahead and put those pieces in there and weld them. Get your professional welder to weld it for you. And just weld them in, and once you get them welded in, go ahead and grind down the welds and paint it up so it doesn't rust. Now that you got your two plates welded in, we're gonna go ahead and just use some spray paint just to make sure that that, that does not rust and break off. I'm gonna put two or, good, two or three good light coats on it. Now, once you got your weld-in plates welded in and painted, we're gonna go ahead and install our front cross member. Now, this is just this big heavy-duty one with the little triangle cutouts in the front. Cross members, our cross members always go, so it, when it bows out this way, offset forward. We provide you with these cam washers. You can see that little V-notch right in it. That is just for a frame variance for putting these in to allow for slack. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this cross member up. Make sure that your V notch is up. Make sure your cam sit in the cam slots here on each front and back of the vehicle. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our cam plates on the rear part of this cross member. Now once again, just V-notch up, and we provide you with the nylock nuts here. Just go ahead and just put those on as far as you can with your hand and leave them loose. You might have to just shimmy the everything around a little bit just to get those cams in place. Now once you got the front cross member installed, you can kind of see that there is a little bit of a gap here. 
So we, we provide you with these 5 8 washers here, and these just sit right between the frame and the crossmember to account for that gap there. So there is a hole in our crossmember and in the frame. We provide you with these bolts. So you just going to go ahead, put that washer in, and then just the bolt through. And it'll go all the way up and put your nut and washer on it and leave it loose. So I'll show you on this side, this washer. You might be able to see the hole in there, right up in there. And you just slide this washer in, kind of line it up with the hole as good as you can. And it, you might have to get a screwdriver or something to be able to get it lined up completely as much, as much as you want it. And then just take your bolt and push it up there. And then you'll just have to take your nut and washers, like I said, on each side and just leave them loose. Now with your front diff, we do provide you with hose extensions here. So with the one that's on this barb fitting here, you're just gonna wanna remove the factory clamps and put it on the newly provided red hose that's just a little bit longer. So go ahead and just loosen your clamp. And push that on there. And then with this hard line here and the hose we provide, you do not need clamps. It is a pretty tight fit. Just go ahead and you might have to lube it up with some silicone or WD. Just press that on a little way. You're good. Once you have the spacers where they're supposed to be, you're gonna go ahead and locate your front diff. Shouldn't have lost it to begin with. And then we're gonna raise it up here. And on this front cross member here, there's three bolt holes, one in the center and the two on the outer. We're not gonna worry about the one in the center right now. We're gonna worry about these two on the outer. So remember on your factory bolts, you had these little washers. We provide you with new hardware here. So you wanna make sure you have a washer in your bolt. Just drop that in there take your new bolt in that factory washer and locate those holes. You might need a friend go ahead and push up on that diff and then use your nut and washer on the top side here inside the cross member and do that on each side and leave this hardware loose for now. Now on the diff we removed this bracket earlier when we were dismantling our vehicle. So you can see here that I already have it notched out but there's, this goes to about right here and you're gonna notch about a quarter inch out and that's just gonna allow for clearance. Um, we're gonna take our factory bolt. You're gonna install this kind of in the same orientation that it was. And you're gonna put it in the diff here with your factory bolt. And you're gonna leave this loose as well. But just kind of remember this little stud just goes towards the back. That's a good. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our rear cross member. Now you can see on the diff mount we just put back on, there's this little stud here. There's a hole here in the cross member. We're just gonna line that up with that when we install it. That's why we leave it loose, just so we can kind of manipulate it where we want it. Same thing, we also provide you with the same cam washers, so just same orientation on those. Might be worth having an assistant to help you push this up. Once again, just trying to V-notch up. Now with that stud through the cross member, the cross member installed, we're gonna go ahead and take our factory nut that was on this stud here, and we're just gonna thread it on, just, just snugged up. You don't have to tighten it down quite yet. Now you can see on the cross member on the front of it here, on this rear one, there is a little tab that comes off. That is just for another mounting point from the factory bracket on the differential itself. So we provide you with a new bolt. Just stick that through, nut and washer, and just go ahead and leave that loose. And also, when we did put our cross member in, make sure that you don't put, you can put your cams in, but do not put your nuts on quite yet. Now we're just gonna go ahead and hook up our differential breathers. On this case, I put it on the hard line on the truck, and I'm just gonna connect it to the one on the diff. So with that step that we told you earlier, you can kind of do it whatever's easier. Same way here. Just find the hard line that you need. Just hook it up. Now that you have your front diff installed, we're gonna go ahead and tighten it up. So when you're tightening it, just make sure that you push it back as far as it can go and then tighten these front two bolts first. So make sure that it will probably slide a little bit. And then you'll take a 22 millimeter wrench on the nut side, 21 millimeter socket. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our front drive shaft. So you might have to pry back on it a little bit to be able to get it installed. And it can be kind of a pain. Just line those studs up with the 
holes on the drive shaft. Slide them on and use your factory nuts and washers. Make sure you want to lock tight those nuts. That just prevents them from coming off. Just put those all and kind of tighten them in a star pattern when you do go to tighten them. Now before we tighten our diff and all of our cross members, we're gonna go ahead and throw our lower control arms in. Now remember the front one had this little sleeve guy here. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this up. Put this sleeve in first. And then you're gonna take your regular bolt, put it through. And you're going to take your cam with the nut that is basically one piece here line that up with the sleeve and just thread it on snug it up there now in the rear we're going to go with our bolt with the cam on it we're going to run that from front to rear as well and then we have this cam plate here just line it up on how it goes on to the arm here and then we have nut and washer just go ahead and run that all the way on and just snug it up now we're going to go ahead and tighten our rest of our differential hardware and our cross member hardware so here on this part of the rear cross member it's going to be a 21 millimeter socket on the bolt side and 22 millimeter wrench on the nut side. We're just gonna tighten that up. And then we're gonna tighten our bolt that we threaded into our diff with a 19 millimeter socket. Snug that up and then also this little captive stud with that nut, 19 millimeter socket as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our rear bump stop. You can leave this front one on. So you can see it just has like a little hex on it all the way around. Best way is you have a big crescent wrench that works, but we can just take channel locks here and just break that free. Don't mind that puff of smoke. Loosen that up and back it out. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our new bump stop extension for the front. And we provide you with these bump stops. We also give you a nut on the stud here. So you can kind of see how this lower bolt hole is just offset down so wherever whatever end this is on how it's down just put this on that part on the lower part take your nut and it's just a flange nut so it doesn't lock so it's easier to tighten and thread that all the way on there and just tighten that down as good as you can and once you i mean if you tighten it too much you'll start to swell this bump stop so you want to make sure that you don't do that so you can probably just twist this so it'll hold it just make it nice and tight now we're going to install our bump stop extension so you remember earlier I told you not to put your nuts and washers on the back side here of this rear cross member bolt. So that's for this bolt hole here. So go ahead and slide that on there. Put your nut and your washer on. And then we provide you with a new bolt to bolt it in the old spot of the original bump stop here. Just thread that up in there. And now before you tighten up this bolt that went into the bump stop, we're gonna tighten up our rear cross member here. So it'll be a 27 millimeter on the nut side, a 27 millimeter on the bolt head side. And make sure your cams stay in place of the slots when you are tightening. Now we're gonna tighten our front cross member, and that is gonna be a 33 millimeter socket on the bolt head side and a 32 millimeter socket on the nut side. Go ahead and just hammer those down once again. Make sure your cams don't play them. Cam plates don't fall out of the slots. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up our bump stop extension. That'll be just a 17 millimeter socket with a ratchet. Let's go ahead and snug that up. Now we're gonna tighten these two bolts with the spacer in between the cross member and the frame. It's a 21 millimeter socket, a ratchet works best, and you gotta hold the nut, which is a 22 millimeter wrench. Go ahead and hold it and just tighten it up. Now we're gonna go ahead and just plug our front differential back in. It's just the original wire harness and diff plug. Just kind of find your hands. Just click it and you'll hear a click once you get it released. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our seal from our factory knuckle. So the best way to remove that is just take a punch and be careful not to damage it. Get on the outermost part that you can because you can see this part's pretty flimsy and just rubber. Get on the outermost part that's kind of partly metal get it out and then just flip it back over and install it you might have to get a piece of tubing and put it on there to install it. or if you feel comfortable just whacking with a hammer you can do that too now we're going to go ahead and install our fox coil over now this bracket does not come installed in the box we have to install this so you can see that the hose will face out towards 
you go out the outside of the vehicle, hose will run to the front of the vehicle. You see this little notch right here? That will also be off to the front. That's just gonna offset it the way we need to be offset to clear things. Uh, the bolt here will be ran from the front to the back with none on the back side. We provide you with this new hardware. You can run this either way you want, whether it's down or up. I just like running it up. Go ahead and hold it up. And just start all your nuts and washers. Now that we have our coilover installed on the upper bracket, we're gonna go ahead and leave these bolts loose. Do not tighten them yet. That's just gonna allow for more flexibility when we are trying to move it. Our next part is on the lower of these coilovers in the box, they, these two little spacers are zip tied. You can see there's a larger one and a smaller one. So the larger one is gonna go to the front of the vehicle and that's just gonna offset it the way we need it to be offset. And then I like to cut a bolt down, be able to hold these because they are kind of a pain. So we're gonna have to install that in there, grab the smaller one, put it on there and this will just hold these in place for you and just try and make sure that that they are as straight as possible and then we also provide you with this new yellow zinc bolt so we're going to go ahead and grab this arm and swing it up and line it up in its home here it might be a little bit of a tight fit and this is where getting this as straight as possible helps to be able to allow it to just Kind of slide up. Once you get it in, this bolt is going to be ran from rear or front to rear and try and slide that other bolt out the other end like that. And it goes all the way through the arm. And then just put your nut on. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten our upper mount of our coilover. So this will be a 9 16 wrench and socket, however you want to tighten it, it doesn't really matter. And wrench on that side and just go ahead and tighten it up. And just do that for all four of them. Now we're going to go ahead and install our new knuckle. So I found the best way to do this is that you wait to put the wheel bearing on. And remember we took these two bolts off earlier on the lower ball joint here. So just find those, make sure you lock tight and we do provide lock tight. Start them both up and use your 22 millimeter socket to tighten them down. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our wheel bearing. So I'll make sure that your skid plate is on there. I'm gonna go ahead and line up those splines, try and slide it on. And then our knuckle is threaded. So go ahead and take your factory bolts from your wheel bearing, thread them, get them all started. Make sure you lock tight those and just tighten them kind of in a star pattern once you get them all started. So now something I wanted to touch on real quick Obviously you can see that we have our BDS upper control arm in here. Your factory upper arm does work, but the BDS arm is an upgraded option that you can use. So I'm just gonna be showing you how to remove this arm because we do have new arms that we are throwing on it. But your factory ones do work, but upgrade is available with our BDS arm. So in our case here, we're just gonna remove this arm for now. So it's just one big long bolt that goes through it and it is a big pain in the butt to get out but we're gonna loosen up this nut on this side. It's a 22 millimeter wrench and you might have to get a breaker wrench on it to be able to break that free. And just be careful that your hand isn't under it when you are loosening it. Might have to hold this side. Once you get it free, go ahead and spin this nut off and there's a washer on each side that will fall off. You have to move a bunch of things out of the way to be able to get this bolt out. But the best way, as you can see that washer, is keep that washer as close to the arm as you can because it will get caught on things just bigger than everything that's trying to slide past. Like I said, it is a pain just because of how big it is. And depending on how long your arm's been in that arm, it might, your bolt's been in that arm, it might take a little bit of force to get it out. And then bring this bolt out and remove your upper arm. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our new BDS arm. We're gonna install the bolt the same way it came out from front to rear. You will have to fight with everything once again. You might have to have a second set of hands even helping you here. Now once our upper control arm is installed, or if you leave your factory one in, same concept here, we're just gonna go ahead and put it into our knuckle. 
with your factory one being tight still, you might have to use a pry bar to pry down on it. Go ahead and put your nut on and you can tighten that up. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our upper ball joint nut. This, for this case, it's gonna be a 21 millimeter socket. And we do have a castle nut, so we are gonna have to just line up the hole to use our cotter key. And always tighten to line up your hole and don't ever loosen to line up your hole. Now once you have your upper ball joints installed into your knuckle, we're gonna go ahead and just snug up our upper bolt here. Do not tighten it fully, just snug it up. We're gonna tighten that once we set up the suspension and put it on the ground. So always tighten if you can from the nut side so you get more force on it. But in this case it doesn't really matter because we're only just snugging it up. But when you go to tighten it, make sure that you tighten it all the way and there's no locking mechanism to this bolt so you might have to kind of get a little snugger to be able to tighten it up fully with a wrench now for all ball joints we do have greasable serviceable ball joints here so go ahead when you once you install it it's very important once you install it into the knuckle and tighten it down we're going to go ahead and put a pump a couple pumps of grease into it and just do that on each side. And then we also provide you with these nice little caps to cover the ball joint cup hole and the grease fitting. And you can see that I have a bunch of silicone around this. This is just to be able to install it and uninstall it easier. There's also an O-ring and you can also see, kind of hard to see, there's little flats here on each side. I recommend putting those out. So when you do to go to pop it off to grease your ball joint, you can just take a screwdriver and pop that out instead of trying to pry around the whole thing and then just snap it in. Now we're going to go ahead and install our CV nut under our CV. So remember this is a 12 point CV nut and we're going to use our 12 point inch and 9 16 socket. And this does have a castle covered thing with a cotter key. So go ahead and tighten that up. And then we're just gonna kind of play with this a little bit to kind of just find the home of the easiest spot to be able to throw that cotter key in. We do provide you with new cotter key. Go ahead and just slide that right through and bend it up. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our front rotor. Just line the rotor up with the whole studs. Slide that on. Then we're going to take our caliper. And we're gonna slide that on. over the rotor and just use your factory bolts with Loctite to hold that on. Now you can see that this brake line is pretty tight here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt here and we do provide you with a new drop bracket. So this is a 12 mil bolt. Just go ahead and remove this bolt. Now once you got that brake line bolt removed, we're gonna go ahead and use our provided brake line bracket. And you can see this little stud on it. This will just face out. You're gonna take your factory bolt, put it in to the factory hole here. And then we're going to take the provided nut and you're gonna have to kind of bend that factory brake line a little bit, kind of persuade it the way you want it to go. And just thread that nut on, just tighten both of those up. And just make sure that once you hook it up to the knuckle and everything, that it is not rubbing anything and there's proper slack and everything like that. Now just use your 12 millimeter socket to tighten up the factory bolt. And then you're gonna use your 7 16 wrench and tighten up that nut. Just go ahead and snug that up. And you can see it here, it's kind of hard to see. There's a little tab from the factory brake line that went into that factory hole here. Just make sure that's not rubbing on the frame because it might create a noise and you don't want that. Now we're just gonna take our 19 millimeter socket and tighten up our caliper bolts. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the factory brake line bracket into the new knuckle. We're gonna use the factory brake line bolt here. So go ahead and just kinda of maneuver it the way you need it to. Make sure that the little tab here goes into the hole on the knuckle so you don't bend that out, like so. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our ABS wire. So that's just gonna go into the same position that it was on the factory knuckle. And you're just gonna have to make sure you grease that O-ring on the wire itself to be able to allow it to install easier. Take the factory Allen bolt, 
and thread it in. And then we provide you with wire clamps. So go ahead and put that wire clamp here. That's just gonna keep it away from the CV. Use your factory bolt and just thread it in. Now we're gonna take our five millimeter Allen and we're gonna tighten up this Allen bolt that holds the ABS to the knuckle. Just make sure that when you're tightening it, it does seat all the way once you get it tightened up. Now we're gonna take our provided front sway bar link. And you can see here on the bottom, we already have an installed spherical bushing with a grease fitting. On the opposite end, we provide you with these new, just regular hourglass bushings. You're gonna go ahead and just silicone those up a little bit, install them, and then take your provided sleeve. And just push it on through and make sure it's just sitting flush with each end. Now on the spherical bushing side with the grease fitting, we provide you with these spacer sleeve deals. So go ahead and just take them and push them in. Should just slide right in. Now we're gonna install our sway bar link with our lower arms. We also provide you with this extra sleeve here. That's gonna go in the original mounting port of the lower arm. We provide you with this new fine thread bolt. And these are gonna go through both this spacer and bushing along with this sleeve here. And it's just gonna go into the factory mounting position. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten our sway bar link. This is gonna be a 22 millimeter socket. Go ahead and tighten that up. Now we're gonna install our sway bar offset bracket and our coilover reservoir bracket. So this kind of goes like this. It just sandwiches between the frame and the bracket. So we provide you with these 7 16 bolts. You can see the smaller slots where they sit in. So they'll sit there so they cannot spin. So when you tighten the bolt, the nut down, it doesn't spin. Here on the bottom side, you have these little slots here for these bolts there. And so what we're gonna do here, we're going to remove these, set this down, put your bracket, and you have two holes here to choose from, kind of wherever within frame variance here. We're gonna, off, and we're gonna offset this bracket forward. So the reservoir bracket will face this way instead of this part being over here, it'll be backwards. And then we're gonna just use our factory nut tab bolts in here, stud those up. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten this bracket up. We're gonna use a 19 millimeter socket and this bracket here is slotted. So just make sure that you push it as forward as it can because we're offsetting the sway bar forward. So just hold it forward while you're tightening. Tighten that up. Now we're just gonna remove our sway bar links from our factory sway bar. So we're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket and just remove those on each side here. This particular truck has these little spacer guys here on top of the sway bar. There's two little holes and two nubs. If they do fall off, just line them back up and click them into place. And then we're just gonna take our sway bar and line it up as we need to rotate. Make sure that those are down. Just line it up with your bolts and throw your nuts on those bolts that we install on the drop bracket. Now we're gonna tighten up our sway bar. We're just gonna take a 5-8 socket as your, your friend swings the sway bar in your way. Go ahead and tighten it. Each side. Now we're just gonna install our reservoir into our reservoir bracket. There's those little cutouts I can show you here, right here. So when you do install them, do not put the hose clamps through these, put it over it. And so we're basically just gonna try and center this up as much as we can and leave your hose clamp where you can still tighten it. And then we're just gonna center up our Fox and our hose clamps kind of the same general direction here. Now we're gonna install our sway bar link into our sway bar. We set eye to eye, so the middle of this bolt hole to the middle of this bolt hole, roughly about six and a half, and you kind of play with it as you wish to make it easy to line up. Just go ahead and throw your nut and bolt on there. Now we're just gonna tighten our sway bar link to our sway bar. It's a 21 millimeter socket on the bolt head side, 22 millimeter wrench on the nut side. 
Now we're just gonna grease our sway bar link. And so when we grease it, we're pretty much filling this whole tube. And we wanna see grease squirt out the side of here. So it might take a little bit of grease. There it goes. Now we're gonna remove our factory tie rod end from the inner tie rod end. So we have this jam nut here. That's gonna take a 30 mil wrench, or you can just use a crest wrench that's big enough if you have one. Then you'll have these flats right here. You're gonna take your 27 millimeter wrench and it's gonna break this jam nut free. And they probably will be pretty tight. So break that jam nut free and that's just gonna allow you to spin your factory tie rod end off. Your tie rod does seem like it's a lot longer, but there isn't much threading inside the tie rod. So when you think you're not quite done, it'll be popping right out of there. Like so. Now we're gonna take our provided tie rod end. We're going to just thread that back on. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our new tie rod into the knuckle. So remember this goes top down. You will not be able to install it from the bottom up because of the taper is completely different. So just when you're doing this, it's best to have your steering wheel completely centered as much as you can, it will be off, but just it'll be just easier for alignment and be able to hook this up. So just go ahead and snug that jam nut up there. Just make sure your wheel is as straight as it possible, possibly can. While installing this, go ahead and put your castle nut on. Take your 22 millimeter socket, tighten that down, and then just find home for your cotter. Now once your nut is installed onto your tie rod, we're gonna go ahead and tighten up this jam nut. Remember, just a 30 mil wrench here. Just tighten it up as much as you can. Do that on each side. Now we're gonna install our front skid plate. We provide you with this body block here, and this is gonna go in the middle. Kind of just separate it and space it down. And just use, have a buddy come in. Put it on the middle nut here on the cross member. Provided hardware. And back out here, there's welding nuts as well. And also on the rear cross member as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and just tighten up our skid plate bolts. They're just gonna be a three quarter or 19 all the way around. We're gonna do our carrier bearing drop. So here, you're gonna to need to support this somehow. If you feel like being He-Man and just holding it, you can do that. But here I have a stand. So we're just gonna remove these two bolts here. There's one here and one on the other side. It's a 17 millimeter socket. So go ahead and remove that bolt. Remove the other one and be careful when you remove the last one. And then we're going to take our stand and slowly move it down. And then your camera guy is going to hand you your spacers. And all these spacers are just a little body block here. You're gonna just install that. So just lower your carry bearing as much as you can. Once again, lock tight these bolts, line it up, thread it in. Do the same on the other side. This side is a pain because of the gas tank. You don't really get much room here. Now we're just gonna go ahead and tighten that up so it's a 17 mil socket. Slug both of them up. And then just tighten down nice and tight. Now moving on to the rear. Like I said in the front, ours is a little bit different here because we already have a kit on it. So I'm kinda gonna explain to you the best I can because ours is already slightly modified back here. So first step that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove a bunch of our brake line and parking brake cables. So here, this factory bracket goes right here. It's just a 12 millimeter uh, socket to remove that bolt. There's also one up here, and I'll explain this later. Remove this bolt from the axle to allow more slack there. Come over this side, same thing, parking brake cable. You should go ahead and remove that. And then on the back side here, Nate's gonna follow around. You're gonna remove this bolt as well, also a 12 millimeter to gain you more slack there. So those are all the brake lines that you're gonna have to disconnect. And then once you do that, then you can start disassembling. 
Now, it, you can see that here we have a sway bar. If you do not have a TRD, you do not have to worry about this stuff, but if you do have a TRD, all you're gonna do is just remove your sway bar links from your sway bar and from the vehicle itself. But if you don't, just skip that step and don't worry about it. Once again, ours are a little different. You can see ours are pretty long, so these are already the ones that we're gonna use, but just go ahead and remove those from the vehicle. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our lower shock bolt from the axle. So this should be the same size for you. It's a 17 millimeter socket and wrench. Just gonna go ahead and loosen that up. And pull that bolt out of there. And then just remove the shock from the axle here. That's just gonna allow us to be able to droop out once we loosen our U-bolts. Now, make sure that you support your stand before you do this step. The shock is fine if you loosen it, but this is what's holding your axle up. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove our U-bolts. Once again, in our case, we're gonna use a 22 millimeter socket and we're gonna loosen all four of them. And you see how the axle is rotating. Just go ahead and remove them all. And this plate might be tight on the U-bolts. So just be mindful of that. You might have to pry down with a pry bar. Just pull that plate off. Might have to lower your stand a little bit, lower your axle, remove your block, and remove your U-bolts. And there is a little plate on top that can come off, but you wanna leave that because you're just gonna reuse that. But just be careful that you don't lose that. Now you're gonna take your lift block. You can see that there's just a pin here. There's a hole in the axle. Go ahead and just line that up and it might be a tight fit. And then the, to make this a little easier on the top part with that pin there, go ahead and just loosen. Do not remove, just loosen the nuts on the other side you bolts. And then you're gonna go ahead and push up your jack and see how I can kind of maneuver the axle as I want. Just go ahead and kind of just find home for that. And you might have to like lean the block just a little bit to be able to pop it in like that. And then you might notice there's a gap here. It, it's, a, it's a small gap, but there's a gap. Once you tighten your U-bolts down, that'll just pull that right in. So then put your U-bolts on top of your leaf springs. Remember, just use that factory plate that's up there. Make sure the U-bolts are in the curves. Then take your factory bottom plate. Only goes on one way. And you can also just squeeze them Squeeze them, push them in. I found that's the best. Line them up. Now you're just gonna take your U-bolt nuts and thread, thread them all on. You're gonna go ahead and just start each one of them on before you start tightening them up. Now we're just gonna snug our U-bolts up. We're not gonna hammer on them yet. So when you're tightening the U-bolts, you wanna make sure that you tighten them evenly so there's a same amount of threads on sticking out of each nut here. So go ahead and just kind of work it out. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You just don't want no thread showing on one and all of them on the other one. Now we're just gonna line our shock back up on the axle here. Throw that bolt in. Put the nut on. And then we can go ahead and tighten this up completely. And once again, just tighten into the bushing swell. Then you can go ahead and remove your stand. Now, once again, if you don't have the sway bar, you don't have to worry about this step, but we're going to just push up on our sway bar here. Just line it up and put your bolts in. Do this on each side before you tighten it down. Sway bar link will only really wanna go on one way because you can't because of the leaf spring. So it's gonna be on the outside of the sway bar. Line that up. Use your 19 millimeter socket and tighten it down. Now, one of our final steps on the rear is we're going to take provided brake line bracket, just like the front. And you're going to take the factory bolt and thread it into the factory nut on the axle here. Line it up with the factory brake line and just go ahead and tighten those down you're gonna do this on each side and then the back here kind of the same concept just a different line 
put that through. Take your bolt. Thread it in. So now you're just gonna go ahead and tighten down all these brake lines. Just make sure when you tighten them that they're vertical and they're not pulling the wires one way or another. For all the factory bolts, they are a 12 millimeter socket. Once you get the nut on here, this will be a 7 16th socket. So tighten this down so it's vertical. And tighten this one down. Now that's how you install our seven inch suspension system with Fox coilovers on this 2018 Tundra. Now if you have any questions about this kit, you can visit bds-suspension.com.